Hey everybody, and welcome to Avid Max Fly Tying Tuesday Tying Tutorial. My name is Brady Lair, and today we're gonna tie a hair wing green drink for you. So to start this out, I have my hook in my vise. This is the 2302 Tiemco hook today. It's a great terrestrial hook. It's a 2X long shank um, with a slight humped bend in it to kind of create that uh, body profile that you're looking for. And then I'm using a Vivis. This is a 10 knot today that I have in olive. Just gonna go ahead and start our thread right on the shank and work back to where we're gonna tie in our tail. Now that'll be the first material we add. It's just a little bit of moose mane. Great stiff material, perfect for tailing. A very traditional tailing material. And I'm gonna utilize anywhere from six to eight of these for this tail. Clip them off of our hide. Clear out some of that under fur that's on there. Not too much with the moose mane. Be pretty easy to get out considering the stiffness of the material. And then we'll go ahead and stack these in our hair stacker. Clip them all to the same length, make it a little easier to stack. Don't have to tap them too much because they are so stiff. They don't tend to stick to each other too much. Stack real nice and easy. We'll grab that bundle and measure out. We're gonna do kind of a stubby tail, about a half of the shank for this tail. And we'll secure that right on top. And start on my side and sort of roll it over until we get our locking wrap down on it there. And then I like to measure out where I'm gonna end it and use that as our underbody just to help add our bulk, build our profile. Before I work forward though, I'm gonna go ahead and split these tails into two, V them out. And so I like to press them up with my finger and that'll kind of split them out so you can find a point to sneak up and in and start to split them. So once you go in between on one side, then you can kind of come back and X wrap around them, creating that separation. And we'll do that just a few times here, up and over and over under to ensure we have them forking out nicely for us. And then once I have them forked, I like to sneak under them with a couple, one or two wraps to help keeping them positioned up and out like I want them. So you can see they're forked out nicely there. And then we'll cover over these butt ends. Adds a little bit of buoyancy as well as builds that profile that we're looking for. And then we'll work on back. Go ahead and tie in our next material. This is some uni floss in golden brown. Somewhat of a traditional style material. Mayflies back in the day were all tied with the ribbing of them. Anyways, it was all kind of a thread material versus the fine wires that you tend to see most time today. We'll secure that right on the side of the hook and walk on back to where we're gonna start our dubbing. So it's a good position there. And we'll bring in our dubbing. So this is some Dave Whitlock that I'm using today. It's the Near Nuff Sculpin color, which I just like because it has some flash in there. It's a nice rich color, fairly dark. You can tie this lighter, a little bit lighter if you need to just based on the bugs that you're trying to imitate in your location. We'll go ahead and dub our noodle, use a little bit of dubbing wax to help control this dubbing and make a nice tight noodle to work with. Green drakes are a great summertime bug. Most of the time they hatch 
late June, early July, depending on the weather. But if you like fishing dries and you like fishing a, a big dry that you can see, figure out where you got a nice green dry catch, tie some of these up and give it a go. It's a good time. And we're gonna build kind of a stout profile to the green drake. Most mayflies you wanna keep real slim and slender. This one is unique, fairly unique, in the fact that it's kind of a beefy mayfly. So we're gonna try and imitate that with our dubbing as best we can. And work on forward, tapering it on up. We just need to make sure that we leave ourselves room on the front end to add in our hackle and our wing. We'll do a few more sections here. Great fly alone, fish it alone. Fish it with a trailing small mayfly, trico, midge, whatever that might be, or drop a dropper underneath it. It's gonna hold up some of your smaller bead heads and your merging patterns, that sort of thing. So it works well in a hopper dropper style rig. So just continue to build bulk as we go. And I'm gonna go right to where I started my thread there. That was kind of my marking point. Right about that position is where I wanna end up for our hackle. And we do still need to bring that ribbing on up over. So keeping that in mind as well. There we go, so I'm gonna go ahead and rib it. With this ribbing, I like to kind of twist it to start. It will still lay flat, which is what we want, but I like to try and bring the gauge down just a little bit on it. And that'll kind of help control it if you spin it as you lay it. And we'll just open wrap it on over the body. And we'll go four or five times to where we can capture it. And then to make a nice smooth transition, I'm gonna add just a little more dubbing. It'll give us something to back our hackle up against. So just like so. Finalizing that transition point right there. And then we're gonna add our hackle. which is gonna be some Mets today. This is a nice dyed olive cape that I have. So we'll come on in, measure out the right size. And for that, we can just pull a piece off our hackle, and line it up to the hook and kind of figure out what's, which one's gonna be about the right size for our hook, for our uh, hook cape there, find the right words. We'll go ahead and tie that in, clip ourselves off a clean tie-in point here. And X-wrap down that piece right behind the dubbing. Push it right up against it so that first wrap is nice and tight up against it. Once you have that X-wrap in place, you can kind of utilize the stem and just pull it nice and snug against the hook shank to secure it in place and that won't come out on you. 
be nice and secure. So we'll do our thread base and then I'm gonna work up and land my thread just about a hook eye behind on the shank here to give myself room to tie in that hair wing. So we'll half hitch right there and go ahead and wrap it on forward. So we'll do one touching right up against, kind of pull that hackle back a little bit and start to wrap Palmer forward with some touching wraps. Right on up to where we landed our thread. Right about like so. And then we can capture that hackle out. And if you hold it nice and 90 degrees and you sneak your thread up on that same plane, down and under, you can really avoid trapping too many barbels. You will get some, but the more you can mitigate, the better. We can trim out our excess, just like so. And then bring on in our hair wing. So for this, I'm using some Wopsy. This is a Wopsy Primo strip with the deer hair. It's a nice dyed dun color. I like the dun because that green drake has a nice gray wing on it. You can also do it with just natural elk hair bleached if you feel like that's necessary. Something to play around with, experiment a bit. Flip that off the hide, get it nice and cleaned out. My waxed up fingers helps pull that under fur out. And we can use our dubbing brush as well. Get it nice and cleaned. And then give it a stack. And this piece, you definitely have to give it some nice firm taps to get that deer hair to all stack because it tends to like to hold on to each other. Grab that by the tips and measure out our wing length here. We're gonna go pretty hefty wing on this. We're gonna do at least the length of the body there. Measure out where you want it, transfer it in your fingers, and then we're gonna clip it off just like you would an elk hair, depending on how you like to tie your elk hairs that is, so that when we bind it down, it'll flare out nicely for us. Spin my thread a little bit. Go ahead and grab it with a couple of loose wraps. And before I secure it, just check on it. And then we can really bite down, get those fibers to flare out and secure it in place. And then to keep it from spinning on you, you can go ahead and go straight through that deer hair a couple times. And that'll keep it nice and locked down. From there, all we gotta do is whip finish. Since I have the room on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and sneak right in front of where that wing is. Grab my mini whip finish tool here. And give it a few turns to lock it all down. And then I do like to come in on this pattern underneath and add some zap gap for some added security. And just a nice big summertime bug to take advantage of when you can.